Hey guys, welcome to the follow-up video to the AMD Ryzen 7 deleting. As I promised to you, uh, I already have deleted an 1800X retail CPU. I have it with me here and as I promised to you, today we will do the direct die cooling test and see if there is actually an improvement if you take off the IHS, clean the CPU, apply liquid metal and put the cooler directly on top of the CPU. Um, that's what we want to test today. So first of all, um, I actually had quite some issues in the preparation um, of, this, of this video. So my original plan was to use a custom water cooling loop with this very beautiful EK Supremacy EVO uh, water cooling block, which is already ready for AM4. And I also already assembled my water cooling loop here. Uh, but then I figured out that this block actually does not fit for um, direct eye cooling. Uh, of course it fits if you leave the IHS on top, works perfectly fine but not if you remove the IHS and uh, let's move over to the board. I have the beautiful Crosshair 6 Hero board with me and as you can see um, my old CPU, the first one I deleted in the previous video is already sit sitting in the socket here. I already also cleaned the CPU and the problem is that this part of the socket, this uh, gray plastic part is actually a little bit higher than the core itself. We're talking about 0.5 to 1 millimeter um, but that's still enough that the cooler would not sit flat, it would sit kind of like this and the contact would be really really bad and probably if I would fire up the rig it would also fire up the CPU and burn the CPU and that's what I want to avoid so I'm not using this uh, AI, uh, the custom water cooling loop unfortunately and yeah I went through pretty much all the coolers I had, all the uh, AIOs and also um, some of my air cooling stuff and luckily I found um, the Rashintech Erebus and this cooler luckily fits and the reason why it fits is mainly because the contact surface is um, fairly small and fits exactly on the CPU itself and there is like half a millimeter or one millimeter um, space to the plastic part on the, on the side so uh, yeah, luckily this cooler fits and also you can see I already mounted the mounting gear here because I already did the previous testing um, with the uh, 1800X when it was not deleted yet. Um, yeah, I did some overclocking tests with that CPU because I wanted to figure out where we are at, what kind of t temperature we reach and so I did some testing with Prime95. I overclocked this CPU at 1.4 volt to 3.9 gigahertz and it hit around 82 degrees celsius on the hottest core and I could not do 4G with this CPU even at 1.45 volts so um, yeah it was pretty much temperature limited because I noticed that um, if I put it to 4G and 1.45 volts the temperature still increases even if the fan speed is at 100% and it hits around 89 to 90 degrees celsius and then it shuts down so that shows pretty much that it's a temperature limitation which we hit for the 4G limit on the CPU. I also did some Cinebench testing, 4G was doable, not always stable, like one out of uh, two or one out of three uh, uh, runs passed, which is not that great, but okay. So that's what we want to improve, that's the basis we have. Um, of course I, have, I took some screenshots which we uh, can look at in the comparison which we will do in the end of this video. So first of all we have to clean uh, the 1800X. For that I will use some blades and basically just um, scratch off the indium. No need to heat it up and um, after that, uh, after the cleaning process I will put on uh, some liquid metal directly to the core. Also apply the liquid metal directly on the base of the cooler, mount the cooler and then uh, I hope we can see some temperature improvement. So I just took one of my uh, smaller blades and we will use this blade to just slim, simply scratch off the indium from the die itself. No need to lose your mind, it's not really a problem to the core. As long as you don't do this directly, it's not going to scratch it because the silicon is much harder than uh, the steel. So We just have to go very smoothly over the chip itself and you can see it's very easy to remove the indium. It 
it's actually quite difficult to get it perfectly clean, but uh, this should be fine. Just um, go several times with the blade over the dye and then it should be okay. So I quickly just removed some of the residues from the glue. It's not really necessary because it's not in the way, but I uh, still did it. So let's put the CPU back in the socket and uh, mount the cooler. So we will use Thermal Grizzly Conductor Out Liquid Metal Compound um, for the CPU. And first of all, we have to clean the dye with those cleaning pads, which are included. Also make sure you clean the surface of the CPU cooler first. So cooler is mounted, ready to go. Um, I will now fire up the rig and, uh, well, let's see what happens. And um, I'm very curious to see the temps. Okay, so I'm done with the testing and the test results are actually uh, not as impressive as I thought. AMD did a really good job on soldering those chips. So um, the difference is extremely small. So the first test I did was again Prime95, same settings as before. So 3.9 uh, gigahertz at 1.4 volt. and um, just to remind you of the first results, we had a um, maximum temperature of 81.1 degrees Celsius and an average temperature of 76.6 degrees Celsius. And in both cases, I had a room temperature of 22.1 degrees Celsius. So same test conditions. And after deleting and putting the cooler directly on the die, I had a maximum temperature of 80.1 degrees Celsius and an average temperature of 72.9 degrees Celsius. So that's a difference in 1 degree Celsius in the maximum temperature and 3 degrees Celsius in the average temperature. That's a very, very small difference considering the risk which is involved deleting those chips. So I also did some Cinebench R15 testing. The first test I did was at maximum 4 gigahertz. I could not run 4025 or 4050. That wouldn't work. After deleting, I could run 4025 megahertz. But I'm not sure if that was just a lucky run, so I wouldn't say that there is any improvement really. I mean, one degree Celsius and maximum and three degree on average is extremely small. So from my point of view, as I said, AMD did a really good job on soldering those chips. So there's no need to delete those. We can really uh, use them stock and I'm happy that we don't have to touch them. We don't have to lose our warranty. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, thumbs up. Otherwise, uh, I wish you a very nice Sunday. See you soon.